uh, giving the positive evidence and uh, presenting it in a very serious way. You won't find these reports in the current textbooks because they go against the ideas of human evolution that later developed. Some people think that you can just publish this information, this uh, uh, information that's controversial, in a scientific publication, and then everyone would know about it, and we'd go down from there. But that's not how it works. It's like a closed system. Um, you can't publish unless you're part of a university or a research stamp establishment, because the um, magazines, uh, scientific magazines, won't accept your stuff. But you can't be part of the research establishment if you're something so controversial that they might get a little hassle from some of their alumni or uh, might get some bad publicity. And so you're outside the system. You might want to get the information out, um, but you're not going to do it. The main outcome that we would like to see uh, from our publication of uh, Forbidden Archaeology is that we would like to see an opening up of our serious scientific inquiries into the nature and origin of human beings and also other forms of life. Uh, we feel that the uh, mainstream scientific position on these questions has been too narrowly constricted for a very long period of time. Much important evidence has been left out of the, the picture, and many important ideas have also been excluded. We would like to see a much deeper uh, investigation into all of the available evidence. Dr. Bao has uncovered human footprints and a fossilized human finger in the same strata as dinosaur tracks. But even more mysterious is the discovery of an ancient iron hammer whose chemical makeup confounds scientific laboratories. We have a man-made artifact that was found deposited in central Texas in the very same layer with the dinosaur footprints and the dinosaur remains. It's a man-made hammer with a portion of the handle still intact. Now this hammerhead turns out to be 96.6% iron, 0.74% sulfur, and 2.6% chlorine. Now that's a very exotic blend. I've spoken with a number of physicists, the heads of uh, numerous laboratories, and uh, it's impossible to fabricate that metal today. That is chlorine compounded with iron in metallic form. Now a portion of the handle is coalified. That means there had to be heat and pressure and some time involved in this. You can't make coal, you can't generate coal just by throwing these materials out. There has to be the compression of the entire layer, there has to be the generation of some heat in order to coalify the material, even in a rapid form. If the hammer just fell into a crevice, there is no process that could have coalified a portion of the handle. That means it was placed there at the time the rock hardened and cured. I've had various associates investigate the entire area. I've been over the area numerous times. They have found a portion of the bedding plane, the actual layer of rock itself, totally identical to the material of the concretion. Now, dinosaur footprints are found within the immediate vicinity. And then you have layers of rock above this bedding plane that are higher still that do not have dinosaur remains in them. But the material that's consistent with the concretionary material around the implement are all in the lower bedding plane area where the dinosaur remains are. Our evidence uh, is an accumulation of data. We have series of human footprints, isolated footprints, series of dinosaur footprints, isolated dinosaur footprints, a human finger and a man-made artifact, all found in the same layer. This means that man and dinosaur did live at the same time. Did man live at the time of the dinosaurs? Or is it possible that dinosaurs still exist today? In recent times, there have been many reports of living pterodactyls. In the early 1970s, there was a pterodactyl uh, flap, if you will, 
that took place uh, around Brownsville, Texas. I was approached by an aeronautics engineer who stated to me that he had seen a living pterodactyl. He was within 50 feet of a creature and he described him vividly. Uh, the creature was on the ground when he first saw him, became airborne and then flew out of the site. And he was again within 50 feet of this aeronautics engineer. He described him as having a beak, a crest, uh, leathery wings, hands on his wings, a tail, grayish brown in color. Now the paleontologist in the audience will realize that this is a description of a Ramphorhynchid pterodactyl and according to standard evolutionary interpretation these creatures saw their demise 225 million years ago. We had here multiple sightings including school teachers and uh, policemen of what they described as flying, giant flying lizards, pterodactyls, flying in the daytime even, which is unusual for pterodactyls because they tend to be apparently a nocturnal type of animal. And these pterodactyls flying along the Rio Grande. Their favorite food is decaying human flesh. And literally some of their funerals have been interrupted by these creatures trying to steal the corpse out of the casket. Now these are very vivid descriptions. Some of the most interesting and credible reports come out of Namibia, a remote country in southwest Africa that's mostly desert. In Namibia, people whom I trust have reported to me that there is an area where a breeding population of pterodactyls still exists today. There is no way that you can account for creatures such as this being alive today and have 225 million years of time involved. Uh, creatures like Mokelium bimbi of the Congo that are matched specifically by the description of a quadrupedal dinosaur such as Brachiosaurus with a large body, long tail, long neck, and small head, uh, having been described by the nationals in the Congo within recent years. Finding creatures like this or the possibility of having creatures alive like this today means that the time has to be compressed drastically. And we're not talking about those millions of years of evolutionary time. How can we explain evidence of man and dinosaurs living at the same time? The theory of cataclysmic geology suggests that the Earth could be much younger than we think throwing into question our whole system of dating. It's often said that the dinosaurs became extinct 65 million years ago. You might ask, uh, well, is this a scientific fact? The truth is, this is not a scientific fact. This is a theory, a scientific theory, and one based on the uniformitarian dating of geological strata. The kind of geology we're taught today is a geology called uniformitarian geology. And this is the school of geology which tells us that geological change is very slow. It happens over millions of years. We can see the kind of changes. And therefore, when we have layers of strata, we then create a, a period of time that's vast in scope, covering millions and millions of years. Yet the same strata in the opposing theory of geology which is called cataclysmic geology, that same strata can build up not over millions of years, but in just a few years, or even in a matter of days. Fossils then, and the geological strata that we, we find them, are simply assumed to have accumulated over millions and millions of years. When animals die in a natural setting, they do not become fossils. A good example of this would be in the early 1800s, Buffalo Bill and his buddies went out to the Great Plains of America and slaughtered hundreds of thousands of buffalo, cut their tongues out and left them on the Great Plains to rot and die. Oh, they're already dead. What happened to those buffalo? Did any of those buffalo ever become a fossil? No. Not one will ever be a fossil. And that is because when, when things die, they decay and go to dust. And when you bury a dog in your backyard, he's not going to become a fossil either. <laughs>